We got some custom hot rod fabricated engine and transmission mounts. Hey, we're gonna show you the easy way to do it. So you might wanna stick around and watch this. You're gonna love it. Looks good though, don't it? Engine and transmission hanging there like it's levitating. Yeah. Before we build these engine and transmission mounts, I mean, it's very important if you use an old stock Model A frame and you want to put a bigger motor in it than what was in it from the factory, you want to boss the frame in. You want to strengthen up the frame. So I'm going to show you how I done mine, see how I got mine boxed in. I mean, it's a good idea to do it. That was a lot of work, a lot of welding, but I got my frame 100% boxed in front rear. Remember my steering box, I got it recessed in a little bit, give me a little more room. I even got it boxed in behind that. Got it boxed in all around the cross member, even up under it, back here. I got a piece that comes all the way up to the top, boxed in there too. This front section of the frame is going to be exposed to view, so I kind of ground the weld grinder a little bit, smooth them up some. Back here, it's going to be under the car, not so much. I ain't able to see that. But since I'm not going to grind it back here, I've done my best impersonation <laughs> of stacking dimes. Yep. They're not stacked real straight, but... Uh, that's a good solid weld anyway. I tried stacking dimes, but the end result for me looked more like stacking cornflakes. I called the Gorilla weld strong and ugly. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work fine. Before I boxed the frame in, I wire wheeled it all good. I put rust killer, the killer rust, and I thought about painting it probably been a good idea, but I don't know if you guys, you welding guys know, if you got any, just a little bit of paint somewhere you're trying to weld, it don't weld good, you get it popping back and all that good stuff. So I got to thinking, I said, well, the frame has been around for 93 years with no paint on it. And if it lasted this long, it already lasts a few more years. So yeah, no paint inside the frame, box it in, call it a done deal. So now I'm set up, I'm about to set the engine and transmission back in the frame, uh, build engine mounts and transmission cross member mounts. So that's next. Got to get it back in there. Since I got the frame boxed in 100%, I'm ready to build the engine mounts and the transmission mount. The engine mounts got to be first. I got the engine in place, right angle, centered, everywhere it needs to be, exactly where it needs to be, so I need to mount it right there. Now, if you're really good with your highly classified scientific rat rod calculations, you might be able to build all that one piece uh, get it cut, built, stick it in there and weld it and be done with it. But I'm going to show you a much easier way. You know me, I like to work smarter and not harder. So it's trying to make that all in one piece, I'm going to make it a bunch of little pieces. Actually four, four pieces to make that. And since the engine is the same distance on each side, 
Every piece I make, I need to make two, one for each side. And even though the motor, the mouse won't, is one's for the right side, one's for the left side, I still use the same pieces to make both. Building a hot rod, putting a bigger motor in your old car, you need custom engine mounts, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do it. Right here, stay tuned, check it out. So I got my first piece cut right there. So actually I made two, one for each side. And what's gonna happen with that piece, it's gonna go on with the slot all the way up. It's very important, I don't know if you see that, but you don't want to slot down there, you want to bring it all the way up and then put that nut on and tighten it up right there. So I got that nut on, hold that piece in, and you notice I got the slot, I got it pulled all the way up because uh, the engine is where it needs to be. So when I set the engine in after I get the mount done, that's where I want it to sit, all the way at the bottom, just like that. Before you go any further, you want to make sure you got the engine centered with the frame and the, the right height and right spot forward back, all that good stuff. So I got my engine where I want it and I'm checking measurements. If I measure here, I got uh, three, three eighths. On this side, I got three, three eighths. It ain't gotta be perfect, exact. Also check it in the back. I got 14. Fourteen. Like I said, it ain't got to be absolutely perfect, but close. So we close. Uh, with same distance in the front. Centered in the back. We centered in the front. So we're ready to make mounts. So what I don't want done, I kind of guesstimated the angle here and the angle there. And I cut me a piece of cardboard and uh, just keep shaping angles till I get them right. And I left it long. And the reason why is because I can slide it up to it fit. And I got it fitting flush there and flush on the frame. So now I need two of these because I can use the same thing up front. So now I can, I can kind of, ever how much I want to drop down, I don't want to, I don't want the mount to come all the way up the top I mean, I could, but I don't think it looked good. I probably want to drop down a little bit because I got this much there, so I got a lot. And also, when you put your template in uh, and pull it up, you don't want it, you don't want it like that. You want it on a, you want it like this. If your piece you cut's a little short, you can just kind of you know what I'm saying? You just kind of pull it in to get a tight fit. So that, you want them on a little angle like that, both of them. So now that we got all that done, I, I'm going to slide this up. I want to come down an inch below here, you know, because my steering box is on the other side. I want to make sure my steering shaft clears. If I come all the way up, it might be a close fit. So I'm going to drop down an inch. But anyway, I'm not gonna mark it an inch down yet. I'm gonna get this on the angle this way I want, where I can still adjust it to get a tight fit. And I'm gonna put a mark at the bottom of that, and the bottom of that, and the top of the frame right there, and the bottom and the bottom of the frame, all the way at the bottom. So, motor mount, frame. Now I wanna drop this down an inch, so I'm gonna measure down an inch. And you see we still got like two inches, there's plenty of the wealth of the frame, so. So I need, actually I need to cut it across there and across here. So here's our template. After it's cut, I'm with well, a cardboard template's cut anyway. Uh, you can't see, but I got a good tight fit here. 
gonna be just like that. All right, I'm gonna check it on the other side. It should be, the, it should fit the other side too. Sure enough, fits that side too. Now, I can grind. If it don't fit perfect, I got root. I can grind, and like I said, I can move this this way to get a tight fit after I grind it to get a really good fit, so not a problem. I need two pieces of metal, just like that. So I got some eighth inch plate, and I took my I took my template and marked out I need two, remember? One for the right side, one for the left side. Should both be the same, or real close to the same. So I'm gonna cut those two out and then get the grinder on them, shape them up, make them fit. Plasma cutter. Yeah, that Vivo plasma cutter does the job on this stuff, for sure. Now, I got those two pieces tacked in place. I can make the template for the top piece now. And of course, lightning holes. Gotta have lightning holes. I got the top plate made, tacked in, so now I can just take the bolt nut off, uh, cut the tack off the frame side and take it out, weld it up, bolt it back up and weld it to the frame and it'd be done. Then do the other side the same way. Got the engine mounts done. Looks more hot roddy than rat roddy, so that's a good thing. I don't have them welded 100% to the frame yet. I'll do that when I pull the engine transmission back out, get the frame upside down where I can get to it good. But uh, they good, they fine. They even look cool from the back. <laughs> now it's time to do the transmission cross member. I'm gonna do it the same way, in pieces, instead of trying to make the whole thing to the pit. So, it should be very interesting. So, hang in there, we're getting it. So I got my transmission mount off the transmission, and I got my first piece made. It's gonna go right there. One down, one piece down, and a bunch more to go for the transmission mount. Got the next four pieces fabbed up. I don't know if you guys realize it or not, but it takes a lot of time to fab this stuff up. I mean, I've been spending a couple days uh, fabbing stuff up for these mounts, engine mounts and transmission mounts, and it only makes just a few minutes of video, so. But it takes a whole lot longer than a few minutes to make this stuff, believe me. Uh, we got all the pieces cut, and they'll start welding together. Uh, these are gonna weld there, one on each side, Pipe's gonna weld on top of that. Uh, this is transmission. It's gonna weld to that. So we wanna weld that on first, make it make life a lot easier. We're gonna get that welded, and then we can deal with the ends. So I got that welded up solid. It ain't going to work, ever going to work. So I went from stacking cornflakes to stacking Cheerios. How's that? Got it uh, pretty much level, got it bowed to the transmission mount, got it welded on there. The end piece is gonna go like Don's holding it right there. So I got a, I got a tack to the frame. This piece welds to the pipe, and then you can take the bolts out and take the cross member transmission mount out. That's the plan. 
So we're ready to weld her up. Weld tack her in, then weld her up. So I got the pipe tacked to this plate. I got the bottom plates tacked to the frame, front and back. Pipe tacked to the top plate. All we gotta do is take those bolts out and the nuts off the tranny mount and take that pipe out. I can weld, finish welding that plate to the frame and finish welding this plate to this pipe. And we'll have ourselves a bolt in transmission mount. I got the transmission cross member mount welded in, bolted back up. Not bad. Look at that weld, like a professional weld of that. <laughs> Engine mounts are welded pretty good. I still got to weld them to the frame there when I get the engine out and get the frame off where I can roll it around and all that good stuff. So, yeah. But they welded. It ain't going nowhere right now. I could probably run it like that, but I'm going to finish welding it up at a later date. And there you have it. Custom, fabricated, hot rod, engine, and transmission mounts. Done easy. Oh, yeah. I bought some Cal Custom valve covers. Paint's coming off of them, but hey, I can fix that. It looks good, don't it? The engine and transmission just hanging there by itself. Hey, I appreciate all you guys commenting about all oh, short oil filters and all that, but uh, the shortest one I could find is three and a half inches, and it ain't no way. I mean, if it was two inches, it'd be probably too long. So I found this relocator that's going to work fine. I mean, I got all, all kind of options with that. Yeah, problem solved. I got the fattest steering universal joint known to man, and it clears. I put it on, and it clears the motor mount, so we fine. And that's not the one I'm going to use. Uh, it looks good, but the thing about it is, is it's too thick. I mean, here, you can't, when, when you tighten the bolt up, it don't even squeeze together. I mean, this sucker is so thick there. I mean, just look, that's my finger. I mean, that's way thick. You can't, it don't tighten up, so I can't use it. I might buy a different one. But it looks good, don't it? Yeah, that's why I bought it. And it looked like the thing to have, good tough stuff, but nope, won't work. Hey, you might want to hit that subscribe button and stick around for the next video, because we're going to be building ladder bars next video. I know you don't want to miss out on that. So Red lost his job as director, so we figured we'd let him try welding again and see how he does with that. I can't see, I can't see. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. Dang, Red, eyes of steel. Check him out. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing Red got eyes of steel because I don't have a weld hood to fit that big head anyway. Cut! What you mean, cut? You ain't even director no more. I said cut, dang it! So Red is not director anymore, but he still likes to say cut every now and then, so I guess we had to give him that. Red didn't make it very long as director. I don't think he's gonna last long as a welder either. Cut! <laughs>